So let me show you how to solve problems with simple harmonic motion. And in this video, I'm going to focus mainly on the, the kinematics of it, just where the object is, how fast it's going, um, and maybe a little bit about the acceleration, right? These are the formulas that they give you. Now, these guys here in the red are not in the data packet, okay? But this is, um, this omega here, okay, is the angular velocity. So it's, what we do is we pretend that, you know, the, the, the simple harmonic oscillator is rotating. So let me just show you what I'm saying here. Okay, I'm gonna go to a little movie of this, right? Um, here is a, a model that I made this video, and I hope it's not chunking here, right? Uh, but you can see that the, uh, the, the little mass goes back and forth, right? Okay, look at the one on the bottom. Don't look at the rotating guy right now, okay? That guy goes back and forth. Notice that it stops on the edges, right? Notice that it's going as fast as it ever goes in the middle, and so simple harmonic motion is just simply the motion of a mass as it oscillates back and forth on a simple spring where the, the, the force that the spring exerts is, is uh, what, minus kx or something like that, like we studied in chapter four, okay? And the way it works is that, of course, you know, if you start, say, on the right side like that, right, the spring pulls it back to the middle where its velocity is a maximum, it overshoots the middle, and compresses the spring, and then the spring pushes it back, right? And that's what we're talking about. I'm going to pause this thing and go back to here, right? So when we say angular velocity, right, what we're saying then is we're talking about the, uh, the velocity of this thing as if it were going in a circle. So notice that, that upper thing there, okay? That upper thing is going in a circle, and when we say angular velocity, we're talking about the radians of angle that it goes through per second. Notice that that thing that goes in a circle stays above the oscillating mass down below, and that's because they both have the same angular velocity. So let me pause that, and we'll go back there, right? And, and so angular velocity is, of course, just there's two pi radians in, um, in a cycle, right? And t is the time, the period to go around one full cycle, okay? So that's what this is, right? So this is uh, period, this is in seconds. Right, this is in radians per second. Right, position. So then, and then, then we've got these other variables. Right, so x is our position at any point in time. Right, that's in meters. This is our velocity at any point in time. Right, that's in meters per second. Okay, and then uh, x naught here is our maximum position. That's as far over to the right as it gets. So if the if the if the thing oscillates, you know, and here's our equilibrium point, and it oscillates to here. And it oscillates to here, right? The uh, amplitude is this distance here. It's just the, the distance from the maximum displacement to zero. Okay, so the middle is x equals zero. Here x is positive the amplitude. Here it's negative the amplitude. Okay, so as it oscillates back and forth, it just goes from positive amplitude to negative amplitude. Equilibrium point is at zero. Right, x equals zero. Okay. Okay. So that that's the basic idea. Okay. So here's this mass. It oscillates back and forth, and this spot right here is minus our our maximum amplitude. Here is positive our maximum amplitude. This spot right here at zero. This is also called the equilibrium point. Because it's the one point where the object could be at rest. If you stopped it, it could actually stay there. If I stop it here and then release it, it'll of course oscillate back and forth, right? Okay. Now, if we talk about velocity, of course the velocity at the edges is zero because if it's not zero, it's not at the edge, is it? Right? And in the middle, it's either positive or negative the maximum velocity. It's either going this way at maximum velocity or this way at maximum velocity, right? Okay. And then acceleration is of course the opposite, right? In the middle, there's no force on it at all because the, the, the force is, remember, force is minus kx on a spring, right? If x is zero, there's no force, therefore no acceleration. When it's all the way over here on this side, if we draw a picture of it, right, the force is, is pulling it toward the middle. So even, even though its velocity is zero, it's got the maximum amount of force pulling it toward equilibrium, right? And so it's actually negative whatever the maximum acceleration is. And here, of course, it's accelerating that way at whatever the maximum is, right? Okay, so let's go here, right, and hit play. So maximum acceleration toward the left, 
maximum velocity, right? Maximum acceleration actually toward the right. It's a weird thing, right? It's but but when it's not moving, it actually has the maximum acceleration. Now there's a ride at Oaks Park called the um, God, the Scrambler that makes you basically you go in and out of this circle, and the maximum acceleration is when it actually has brought you to a rest and is pulling you back. Your eyes are bugging out and you're crushing the person next to you. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's do, uh, let's do an example problem here, and we'll use these formulas for you, right? So a, a, a show, a uh, folks show, goes up and down. A simple harmonic oscillator goes up and down, has a period of 12 seconds, so that's our T, right? And an amplitude of 5 meters, so that's its x-naught. So T equals uh, 12 seconds, right? Uh, x-naught equals uh, 5 meters, right? And then uh, we want to know, okay, it starts in the middle going upward. Right? Well, there were two families of equations, right? But that means that we're going to use the family of equations that says that x is x naught uh, sine omega t, right? Okay. And, and of course, sine is something that goes, uh, it does this, right? It, it's uh, sine looks like this. It goes, here's that zero, right? It goes up and then down and then up, right? Okay. And then our velocity. Our velocity is uh, maximum velocity cosine omega t. Okay, and so that cosine, of course, looks like this. It's like, whoa, that's a terrible cosine. Make that you know roundy, but anyway, it, okay, there it is, right? Okay, so um, so we know that we're going to use that family if it starts in the middle, going upward, right? Okay, so what's its position in uh, six point five seconds? Well, to do that, to find its position, we're going to have to find uh, omega, right? And omega is uh, 2 pi over t, so that's uh, 2 pi over 12 is pi over 6, okay? So that's our omega and uh, our position in 6.5 seconds. Well, x is going to equal our amplitude, x naught is 5 meters, right? So I'm going to go 5.0 meters sine of pi over 6, and then move 6.5 seconds, right? Right? Okay, so now we're all set. Now, you've got to be in radians. These are just bald numbers that we're putting into the, the sign. There's no sense that these are like degrees, like we're dividing by 180 or something like that, right? So it's got to be radians. So take your calculator, go second mode or mode. Make sure go down to radians, hit enter, right, hit clear. Okay, now I'm going 5 times sine, left parenthesis, pi divided by 6 times 6.5, right parenthesis. And I get negative, the velocity is negative 1.294 meters per second, right? Okay. Ta -da. There's our answer, right? Uh, I'm sorry, not meters per second, just meters. It's just, a, it's not a velocity, it's a position, right? Okay, so there, that, that's our position. And of course, this makes sense because if this is our full cycle here, this is 12 seconds, that's six seconds halfway through, right? Because the period's 12, right? That's six seconds, so at, at 6.5 seconds, we've caught it like there. Right? So it's definitely below the x-axis, that makes sense, right? And then what's its velocity in 6.5 seconds, what's its velocity? It should be at, should be the word here, at, okay? So in order to do that, we've got to use this guy here. We've got to go V is V naught cos omega t, right? Now, how do you figure out the maximum velocity? Well, we're going to cheat. We're going to use this formula in the data packet. V equals plus or minus omega square root of x naught squared, amplitude squared minus position squared, okay? That's what this means. So this formula is that uh, velocity is angular velocity times the square root of maximum displacement or amplitude minus the current displacement. Okay. Now, maximum velocity occurs right in the middle at equilibrium because the spring it's gone. You know, it's going back and forth, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's it's going to happen right in the middle because the spring has pulled it toward the middle and it hasn't been slowed down by the compression of the spring, right? Okay, so what you do is just make x zero for v naught, right? 
Okay, well, if that's zero, then this is V naught is omega times the square root of X naught squared. So V naught is omega X naught, right? So that, that's actually really simple. <laughs> okay, so now we're all set. Our maximum velocity is um, pi over six, right? That's our, our omega, right? Times, uh, what is our distance? Five, right? Okay, so... Um, Second pi divided by six times five times oops is two point six one eight meters per second, right? So uh, what's its velocity in six point five seconds? Well I'm gonna go V equals uh, V naught, right? So I'm doing this and our maximum velocity is our our uh, two point six one eight. Right, so that is, by the way, pi over 6. For you guys who don't want to round, right? That's what it is, right? Okay. Uh, times cosine. And then our omega is pi over 6. Right? Times 6.5. Okay. So that times cosine, parenthesis, pi divided by 6 times 6.5. And I get that the velocity is minus 2.528 uh, meters per second. Okay? And uh, that means that at 6.5 seconds, it is going down. It's going down pretty fast. The maximum velocity was, was 2.618. This is just slightly slower than that. So yet yeah, just beyond 6 meters. At 6 seconds, it would have a maximum downward velocity. Right? Um, and then... Uh, at 6.5, it's a little bit less than the maximum. It's negative because it's going down. This does make sense, okay? So that's that's that one, right? And this uh, this is there's a note guide for this, so you can you can actually download the note guide probably on this website. Okay, so let's go C and D. What times will it be at the top and what times will it be at the bottom, right? Well, let's draw a little picture of this right here. It is boop. Here's one complete cycle, okay? This is 12 seconds, this is um, 6 seconds, this is 9 seconds here, right? And then this is, of course, 3 seconds, right? So it'll be at the top at 3 seconds, and then, of course, 12 seconds later, it'll be at the top again, right? So, so uh, 12 seconds after 3 is 15, right? So it'll be 3, 15, uh, 27, uh, 39, uh, uh, 51, is that right? I'm just adding 12, plus 12, plus 12, plus 12, plus 12, right? Okay, that's when it's going to be at the top, right? And then it's going to be at the bottom at 9 seconds, right? That's our first one. And then 12 after that's 21, and then 33, and then 45, and then uh, 57, et cetera, et cetera, right? Yay. Okay. And then it says, what is its velocity when it's at a position of 1.75 meters? I just wanted to use this formula. Just there it is, right? Okay, and we can't really say it's velocity. We can say that it'll be plus or minus something, right? X naught squared plus, whoops, minus X squared, right? Okay. So uh, omega is uh, pi over 6, right? It's uh, 2 pi divided by 12, right? Okay, and then square root of 5 squared minus 1.75 squared, right? That's going to be our velocity is plus or minus this, right? So pi divided by 6 times the square root of 5 squared minus 1.75 squared. And I get 2.45 plus or minus 2.452 meters per second, right? Yay! So this is not very hard. I'm going to derive this in the next uh, title video, okay? But but that's not so hard. Is that hard? It's not too hard. All right.